All right. So in the previous lesson, we learned how to create a new title screen using two different methods, using 32-bit and 8-bit. When it came to working in 8-bit, we had to do some work with the palettes. I took you that route so you could at least know how to work from scratch in that way, even though there are definitely a lot of faster methods. But learning how it works helps you understand and appreciate the faster methods even more. Now with that foundational knowledge, let's look into the scenes. Remember, we said that scenes were any screen, animated or non-animated, that aren't interactive that allow you to drive the gameplay. They are also used for logos and intros at the launch of the game. In our next lesson, we'll be creating an animated logo for your demo. The best way to understand how the cutscenes work is to look at an example of one. Do you remember where they're held? Right, data scenes. So let's go ahead and go to data scenes folder in Sublime Text. You should always have Sublime Text open and GIMP as well right now. Let's look at the intro.txt file. You should remember where this is shown. When you launch the game, you see the Sega SNK logo, then the Senile Team logo, and then you'll go into a cutscene of the different players of the game. This is the intro.txt file. So let's double click on it to open it up. Now that it's open, we can see the syntax at the top, and there aren't too many of them for cutscene files. So we have the following functions. We have music, animation, and silence. There's one more function that isn't listed here, which is video, which allows you to play a WEBM file but we won't be worrying about this in this course. The music command is just like the music command in level files. It takes a music file, BOR or OGG, and plays it at the load of the scene. You can also choose if the music loops or not. The animation command allows you to play an animated GIF on the screen. All of your animations can be in this file to save time. There are also other ways that you can use to animate sprite models and such as well, but that's definitely an advanced coding technique. We may do something like that in the advanced course. The next two required parameters are just the X and the Y value of where we want to place the animation. Think of how we use the chords command in the stage design files. It's the same concept. There's a skip, and non-skip parameter that determines if people can skip past this, but by default, the skip option is turned on. The silence command determines if music that may have been playing prior to the scene will be turned off or not. So you would set this command with a value of one to stop any other music that may have been playing before. It works in conjunction with the music command. And that's it, man. These files are definitely small by comparison. We'll next go into creating and adding your own logo to the project. We hope you're learning what you can from these free tutorials. Again, if you feel you need more in-depth or extensive services or extra help with learning and getting the most out of this and don't want to wait on the videos, please feel free to join our DBH community for only $5. That doesn't mean you can't ask questions on here though. So if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to post those. Like and share this playlist for those who may need it. At the end of the day, we just want to help people build their engineering and coding skills to be efficient wherever they want to go. I'm Kevin. Appreciate you watching and be brilliant. Peace.